Welcome to another fine edition of On the Spot. My name is Ronnie Wiley. This lady is no stranger to your television. She's broadcast legend and Connorsville native Betsy Ross. Betsy, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Talk about Connorsville, Betsy. You've been here for a very long time. You mm -hmm. were born and raised here. Mm -hmm. Tell Went us, school here. Tell us uh, you know, a little bit brief history of, of, of Betsy Ross and Connorsville because lots have changed over the years. That it has. Uh, I guess starting with uh, just my education, I went to two one-room schools. Wow. Um, wow. Out in the country. Uh, went to, uh, I was uh, raised in Alpine, which is just south mm -hmm. of here, right. and it's where my, my family home still is. Um, went to Nulltown, mm -hmm. which had a one-room school at the time. Where was and that located at? It is, if you're familiar with Nulltown, and mm -hmm. let's say if you're going south through Nulltown, there's a hill that you see on the right-hand side right. on the west side. You go up that hill and probably go back maybe a half mile, and of course now it's a farm field. Right, right, right. But that's where the, the grade school was, grades one to four up in Nulltown. And then when you graduated from Nulltown, then I went to Garrison Creek for grades five through eight. And Garrison Creek, the building is still there. It's right. now a church. Right. Okay. Um, but that's uh, west of Alpine, straight west yeah. of Alpine, about three miles. So uh, my education was two one-room schoolhouses. And of course, you tell people that, and they think you went to school with Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and his I'm boyhood going, home was here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It wasn't quite that yeah, long yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I uh, went from uh, a one-room schoolhouse with about 30 kids and uh, seven people in my eighth grade graduating class to Connersville High School, which at the time had 1,700 students wow. in it. So a big change. you could imagine walking into that. I mean, you thought you were on a college campus. It was such a change from a one-room schoolhouse to Connersville High School. And of course, I went to the old Connorsville oh, right High Grand. School, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. I was the next to the last class to graduate from there, but still, it was big for someone who had just been to a one-room school. Sure, absolutely. So you know, it's, it's a grew up rural area, mm -hmm. a lot of farming. Any siblings? I mean. Tell, tell us, when you were a child, I mean, did you do farm chores? I mean, No, we just lived out in the country, had a couple of acres, didn't farm. Um, mm -hmm. We had a garden. That was my uh, job in the summer. We always had strawberries that we sold during the summer, during the spring and summer, and that was my college fund every year, every time when we sold mm -hmm. strawberries, that that was my college fund. Uh, I have an older sister, uh, Jeannie. Um, who also went to Connersville High School, and a lot of people uh, mm -hmm. here know her. She mm -hmm. uh, ended up teaching up in Plymouth and in South Bend, and now she's more or less retired. She still fills in every once in a while mm -hmm. teaching, but she's more or less retired in the South Bend area, but still has a lot of friends down here as well. So you go to this big high school, um, which, you know, over there, the, the, which I could, the junior high South mm -hmm. is what they call it. Mm -hmm. So you go there to that big school. When did the broadcast journey journalism bug bite you? Because everybody gets bitten by the bug. When did you get bitten by the bug? <laughs> uh, the broadcast in was, was late, uh, but I always knew that I wanted to be a journalist. I always knew I wanted like to write. Like writing, right. Yep. Okay. Yep. And of course, you know, we see the media world these days changes right. every day. So. Right, sure. Mm -hmm. But um, I always knew I wanted to write, and um, uh, I wrote a letter to the editor when I was in sixth grade and I got to see it in print in the Kyersville News Examiner and I thought that was the best thing since sliced bread that I what I wrote had my byline on it oh, wow. and they printed it they must have thought it was good enough that they would yeah. print it and I thought well that's pretty darn cool. Do you um, still have that? Did you clip I'm it I'm sure it's somewhere well, yes we got my mother clipped <laughs> all that so I'm sure it is but um, I always um, give credit to um, a lady who was a longtime columnist here in town, Candace Murray. Mm -hmm. And she had a column in the News Examiner called Oh Yes, Oh Yes, Oh Yes. And it was kind of the gossip column in, in Connorsville. Oh, wow. And, you know, and uh -huh. it, oh, oh, we had gossip, let me tell right. you. We do, still do. Yeah, I was but, say, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but back then you could print it. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Candace uh, would uh, just talk about, you know, things going on in town and things like that. And um, we had an assignment. Uh, I was either fifth or sixth grade. We had an assignment to interview somebody. And, you know, a lot of people were interviewing like their sisters or their brothers or their parents or something. And I said, I want to interview Candace Murray. Oh, wow. 
So uh, my mother called her and um, we waited till my dad got home from the factory and then we drove uptown and went to the news examiner and uh, I interviewed her. And um, I always say I don't know where I would be if she hadn't stayed around and, and did that did, did that interview with me because she had to stay after work, yeah. you know, uh, when everybody else was gone. But she stayed there and I interviewed her and, you know, she took the time to talk to me about journalism and about newspaper. And I don't know if I would have gone in that direction if she mm -hmm. hadn't taken that time. Wow. And I, I just remember being in that newsroom and everybody's desks were everywhere and, you know, there was papers yeah, this yeah. high yeah. and it smelled of ink oh, and there yeah. were photos yeah. and everybody's desk was a mess and I thought this is for me <laughs> I love this this is like so fantastic yeah. and so that's when I knew you know that's what really put me on the path of, of being a journalist being a writer and so when whenever anybody Ask me for 10 or 15 minutes to talk about the business. I always give them that time if I can because somebody if gave you the time. Candace Murray hadn't done yeah. that. I don't know if I would have taken this path. Yeah, and again, paying it forward here on the yeah. show, uh, uh, giving back. So, you, so Candace uh, set the tone for you. You started writing. Um, you were still in high school. Um, was, was there the Clarion at the yep. time? Yep, I wrote for the Clarion and uh, I wrote for the Cohescan. Oh, wow. uh, I was on uh, both staffs. Yeah. I had a column in the Clarion. Uh, we had um, a, a couple of different columns. Was it a gossip column? It was not oh, a good. gossip column. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's not real good in high school. That, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Basically, and it changes every day. Oh, that's you right. Know. You're right. Absolutely. Uh, right. But we had a. I, I remember I had a couple of columns. One was an exchange column that we would trade um, high school newspapers with other high schools around oh, the state. Wow. And so we kind of got an idea of what other high schools were doing, and especially if it was was a high school that we played in, right. in football or basketball. Well, we traded uh, high school newspapers, so we would uh, print articles from the other papers, just talk about what the other high schools were doing. And then I had a, I had a, uh, a column called "So What's New," and it was you know what was new and what was going on at, at the high school at that time. So, wow. so you a lot were, of fun. You were a trendsetter. Well, I hope. <laughs> so, but back then there was no CHS today. So mm -hmm. you were. So right now at this stage of your life, you're focusing on I'm going to write. Mm -hmm. Did you write any books, or was it just strictly news topics, topical stuff? Um, I was uh, just, you know, really involved. I wanted to be a newspaper reporter. I wanted to do investigative reporting for the Chicago Sun-Times. I had oh, wow. it focused down. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I, I uh, went to Ball State because Ball State did and does have a real right. strong journalism mm -hmm. program. Uh, so I went to Ball State, majored in journalism, and I knew I was going to be an investigative reporter for the Chicago Sun-Times because at the time they were doing amazing investigative work. Right. And so that's what I wanted to do. And then um, when I, I was getting my uh, teaching certificate at the same time at Ball State, and so when it came time for me to uh, do my student teaching, I came back to Connersville to do it. Mm -hmm. And they gave me the option, they said you can do uh, two classes in journalism and two classes in English because that was my minor. And I said, you know what, I'm probably not going to teach English, mm -hmm. so what else you got? And they said, well, they've got a radio and television program there. I said, good. How hard can it be? You and know, this is at CHS. This is, yeah. yeah. And so I got to do my student teaching at Carnesville High School in both journalism and radio and television. Never mind the fact I'd never taken a radio and television right. class yeah. in my life. But um, so uh, Mr. Glowacki, of course, had just started the program. Wow. It was, you know, the first in our area yeah. to do anything like that. And kids were like cranking out material every day. You had to. Right, yeah. Because you had yeah. the daily mm -hmm. uh, update. So I'd go out with the students and we'd shoot video and we'd write and we'd edit and I was learning as I went and I thought, you know, it's my last quarter because we were on quarters in Ball State. I said, my last quarter of my senior year in college and I finally found out what I wanted to do. Is that epiphany moment? It, I, it was. Yeah. It was absolutely that. And yeah. so, um, so then I um, turned around, got my master's degree in communications, mm -hmm. but I heavied up on the television so I could get some television experience. And it was uh, it was just so much fun, though, to learn along with the students right. in Mr. Sure. Milwaukee's class. And we yeah. learned everything from, from doing the editing to writing scripts right. to doing camera to, you know, lighting and everything. And that's why, to this day, uh, students at Mr. Milwaukee's class will still say that 
when it, they get to college, yeah, they already ahead. know. Yeah, they're they already ahead. They know how to yeah. do that and, stuff. And, and it was about a year or so ago when, when Fox 19 donated the set and you were on, on hand for that. How did that make you feel, you know, coming back all these years and you basically got your love in that studio and yeah. there you are giving back? It was, it was uh, you know, one of these moments. It was so much fun because uh, Fox 19 uh, just got a new set about, as you said, last spring. Yeah. We got a new set. And any time that you get a new set, well, you've got these old sets, and and you know they are big and clunky right. and just humongous, and you never know what to do with them, you know, right. once you switch out. And so, I'd asked uh, our news director. I said, you know, uh, who's getting the who's getting the new set? And they said, well, uh, UC University of Cincinnati already asked to get the, the main news set. And I go, okay. And then like two days later, they came back and said, well, but nobody's taken the weather set. Do you know if somebody could use the weather set? And I go, well, let me ask. And so I shot off an email to uh, Mr. Glowacki. I said, um, Fox 19 is getting rid of, of their weather set. Do you think you could use it for CHS yeah. today? And so he got right back to me. He said, yes, we'd love it. We love it. We love it. Yeah, so, um, you know, it was a, it was a day long d job to take it apart and yeah, then put it, and back, put it back together. Yeah. But, uh, um, Steve Horsmeyer, the chief mm -hmm. meteorologist at Fox 19, and I got to be up there for the dedication, and uh, it was so much fun to uh, be there. They had to cut kind of the top off of it so it would fit in the studio, but it's so much fun to see them be able to use that right. and get more use out of it right. because you hate to think that a set like that could just be junk. Right. Uh, so it's so much fun that somebody gets some good use out of it, and um, you know. They take pride in what they do. They take pride in the product, and they take pride in the program because, sure. you know, as long as Mr. Glowacki has been there, you know, these kids go on and they graduate and they learn the business, and mm -hmm. then they go on after yeah. that and get jobs in television or film or you know something that has to do with communications, and it's so gratifying to see. I was bitten by the radio bug in my mother's womb, uh, <laughs> and, and and when I moved here to Connorsville uh, my junior year in 1987, I, I we had never had that mm -hmm. over in Ohio. We never had the television, so I wanted to be on the TV show, I didn't realize you had to have good grades to go along with it. Um, I just knew what I wanted to do. So mm -hmm. uh, good grades, uh, I <laughs> went until later on when I went to college that I realized you needed to have good grades. So you're, you're in college, um, your last quarter, your senior year, you finally have that aha, I want to do this for a living. Mm -hmm. You got to get a job now. Yeah. So how was uh, Mr. Glowacki and, and, and that experience uh, uh, instrumental in you getting your first job? And where was that at? Well, my, my very first job out of uh, college was I taught journalism. I taught oh, journalism wow, okay. up at Maryville High School up in mm -hmm. the region. Mm -hmm. uh, but I knew that I wanted to go back and get my master's right. to have that television experience. So... Um, I taught there one year, and then I started my master's at the University of Notre Dame. Oh, okay. Wow. And I worked at the newspaper there, the South Bend Tribune, at the same time. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was able to still, you know, work, be in the business, but then uh, go to school. And it was uh, really a great experience at Notre Dame because um, I took a lot of my classes in the summer, and they have adjunct professors, especially teaching there at the summer. But I had. I had uh, one professor who had just retired from St. Martin's Press in New York, and she had written a book, and it was just in the process of being made into a movie of the week. Oh, wow. Remember when they used to do movies yeah, of the yeah, week? Yeah, I remember watching her, it. Her book was becoming a movie of the week on ABC, so like every class she would come in and talk about the process and the yeah. editing and who they were casting, and it was Desi Arnaz Jr. Oh, who wow. was going to be the lead. And So she could come in every class and tell us about this real-life experience. So your flames are getting fanned yeah. even, wow. And had a guy who uh, had just left ABC News in New York, had another gentleman who was in the advertising business in South Bend so they could talk about you know what was going on right. now in right. the business which was you know it was so invaluable you sure. still have the the professors who have been there for 20 years who you know really teach the core of that but just having those adjuncts talk about With the experience and, yeah, yeah it was such a bonus yeah. yeah and I was so fortunate that I I graduated on a Thursday 
from Notre Dame, and I got my first job in television that Monday. Wow. And that never happens. Yeah, I was going to say that's... It I never mean, happens. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> so so you, you get that, that lucky break. Was it right away, did you realize that that didn't happen, that you were really one of the, the lucky ones, or was it later on in your career, did you realize, wow, I... Man, that was just... No, I, I knew I was very fortunate yeah. because even when I was going to graduate school, um, I thought, well, television stations will fall over themselves wanting to hire me because I had all this newspaper experience. Right, yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm a journalist with a capital J, and I can write, and they would love yeah. to have me. And I found out that wasn't, that wasn't the case yeah. at all. <laughs> they could have cared less. They yeah. wanted somebody with television experience. Right, right. And, uh, you know, that was something that I didn't have outside the classroom. But um, I, was, I was very fortunate that I had made a, an audition tape um, uh, at one of the South Bend slash Elkhart Market stations for another station in Fort Wayne. Mm -hmm. But I needed a professional-looking tape, and so I, you know, Again, you just call up the news director and say, hey, you don't know me, but right. I'm trying to get into the business and I need an audition tape. Is there any way that I can come over some afternoon and just do a couple of bits you know, on right. camera? And they said, sure. And so I came over and I did it. And, and uh, after I got done, the news director was there and he said, he said, do you have a burning desire to go work in Fort Wayne? And I go, well, no, not necessarily, but you know, they asked for an updated sure. audition tape and you know, I'll go wherever. Yeah. And he said, well, stand by because there may be something opening up here. And in about a month or so, they had an opening for a reporter. And so I was very fortunate to be able to, to get that job right after I graduated. And so that was, that was my first job in broadcasting. So you were a field reporter, correct? Field reporter, um, uh, sometime anchor, fill-in anchor, morning cut-in anchor. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, at, yeah. a, at a station in South Bend, you do a little bit yeah, of everything. Doing, put, wear multiple hats. Yeah. So, so you went from this little girl who wanted to work at the Chicago Tribune. Is that the newspaper? Was Sun Times. Sun Times, sorry. <laughs> so Chicago Sun Times, you had it visualized to now, I want to be on the television. Mm -hmm. Was there a station that you thought, I got to work at that station? Because for me, when I was at radio, it was Z93 in Dayton. Mm -hmm. That's what I grew up listening to. Mm -hmm. I ended up working there. I was very blessed with that. Was there a television station where you thought, I got to get there? And once I get there, that's, that's it. Well, I always wanted to get back to the Cincinnati market because that's what we watch growing right, sure, up. Yeah. You know, in, in the Connersville area, you know, you're kind of split. Half the people watch Cincinnati, right. half the people watch Indianapolis. We were in the south end of town, so we got the Cincinnati signal Stations. better. Right, yeah. So uh, I grew up watching Cincinnati television, um, and I knew that that's where I wanted to work. I was familiar with what they did. Um, you know, they had all the live toys, and, and of course, Channel 9 had a helicopter, which was unheard of and back Uncle in the Al. 80s. And Uncle Al. Uncle Al, come on, you got to remember Uncle, Uncle Al. Uncle Al and, yeah. and Al Shalakati and all oh, those yes. legends. Yeah. Yeah. You know. yeah, I forgot about Al Shalakati because you can never pronounce that word, and if you do, <laughs> you might commit an FCC violation if you say it wrong. <laughs> That's true. So, so you wanted you familiar with Cincinnati Market. Mm -hmm. You're working in Fort Wayne. Um, was there a job in between? Fort Wayne to Cincinnati, or, or take us on that path that led you to... Well, I was in South Bend. Or South Bend, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, I was yeah. in South Bend, and um, it was just one of these things that, um, you know, again, you never know what's going to happen and right. what's going to open up. Right. And um, I would always send out uh, resume tapes back then. You know, you didn't post them on YouTube. You right. yeah, physically yeah. send a tape. So, yeah. And they had to string it up. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so I would send tapes periodically um, to the Cincinnati stations, you know, just, just to see because you never knew. Right. And um, then uh, one evening, um, Al Shadokati, Al Shadokati himself, the legend, Al Shadokati, called my mother because I, I always would give my mother's home phone number and called my mother and to see what my availability was and um you know and so she's and my sister happened to be home at the time and you know she's very calm yes mr shalakai well we watch you all the time mr shalakai <laughs> that wasn't true she watched nick clooney on 12 oh, but she wasn't going to say that and she well, said, sure you know yes mr shalakai i'll give her the message and everything and so it hung up and so my mother goes charging up the stairs to where my sister was and she goes i'll shot i'll do i'll yeah. the same thing you yeah. can't quite you say, can't say she was so excited right, yeah. you know, couldn't quite say 
Hey, Al Shadokati. Uh, but that's how I got uh, into the Cincinnati market was uh, Al Shadokati called my mother wow. and he hired me at uh, Channel 9. Yeah, yeah I, big WKRP, and this is just a little, uh, I'm sure you know this, but the first season of WKRP, they would have... Um, shots of Cincinnati and mm -hmm. there was a news guy and it was Al Shadokati right. who, oh, yeah. who did that on the first <laughs> season. So so you were, it, obviously you're probably just as excited as your sister was when you got the call that Al Shadokati called you and wants you to work at, at uh, uh, CPO. Mm -hmm. So take me through the first steps when you're walking in there. I'm sure you're like, I'm here. I'm finally, I, did you feel like you arrived? Um, I really did. Um, it was, uh, again, working with Al Shadokati was, um, I mean, he, he was and a is a legend. Yeah. And uh, an old newspaper man that mm -hmm. uh, switched to radio, that switched to television. It was a unique style of broadcasting yeah. that they did mm -hmm. then because there were no packages. Mm -hmm. You never saw a reporter except for the back of their hands when they were holding the microphone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it was, it was, you know, just just really solid journalism. And I joined CPO um, maybe about six months or so after the hostage incident, if you oh, it's remember. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you remember that. Um, I, I joined them, well, it was probably about a year afterwards. Uh, I joined them after the hostage incident uh, that, um, you know, Shadokati had to broadcast out mm -hmm. in the parking lot because right. there was a gunman in our newsroom. Was it 79 or 8? Yeah. I'm yeah, yeah was, I, I, I remember hearing about mm -hmm. that because I, I want to say that and the Who concert was sort of right around the same time. Yeah, about yeah. the same time. Yeah. Um, so, so you're there uh, right around right around that time, and 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 again, you know, I know in my experience working with people, and I just cracked the mic, working <laughs> with people who that I grew up listening to and I grew up uh, uh, wanting to meet. Um, you know, they can make or break when you meet them. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Al Shadokati was somebody that, when you met him, you're... Uh, take me to that first meeting when you first met with him, and he, <laughs> he knew who you were. Well, um, he was, like, almost an hour late. He, <laughs> left, he left me in the waiting room for about an hour. Um, second thing, I thought I had heels on, and Al Shadokati was not all that tall, and so I had heels on, and I was taller than him, and I thought... I've just blown this interview because I am taller than Al Shalakati, yeah. <laughs> but uh, he, he, he didn't mind. Um, and uh, it was just um, really, you know, he, was, he wasn't big on chit chat. It yeah. was, you know, I've got two jobs opening. One's a producer, one's uh, a reporter. The producer's job pays more. And I said, I'll take the producer's job. I don't know what made me say that, except when he said, the producer's job pays more, but the producer's job also I knew was going to be um, part-time fill-in anchoring mm -hmm. and things like oh, that. Okay, which so you have... Yeah, I had yeah. anchoring opportunities. So yeah, I said, I'll take that. So I think I was making maybe $8,000 a year. Well, back then, that, you know... And that was double what yeah. I was making in South Bend, and so I did, yeah, I thought $8,000, $9,000, yeah. well, I've got yeah. it made. Yeah, you, you got it definitely yeah, made, especially right. coming from a one-room school. You, house. you, you have arrived. <laughs> so, so you're at uh, CPO, uh, this is, and again, that's when I, and I, I kept thinking, was it I didn't remember if you were on five or nine back then, but I do both. remember both. you were on both. I, I, yeah, I was on five after I came back. I made that's a, right. I made an East Coast yeah, that's swing, right. and then I came back that's, to five. Yeah. yeah. So, you're, but but I remember back in the '80s when I lived over in Dayton mm -hmm. watching you, uh, mm -hmm. and then I moved over here, and people were like, "Oh, Betsy Ross, she's from right here in Connorsville." Oh, well, great. I got to meet her. You know, 27 years later, I finally get to meet <laughs> you. Uh, although I did see you one time over at uh, I think it was Great Expectations, and you were yes. there, and uh, and I, but I didn't want to bother you. I thought yeah. she's eating. I can't bother. Yeah. Uh, but but so so you're you're, you're there at Channel Nine, uh, then you get to go. To Indianapolis, mm -hmm. and I remember they they did an article here in the paper mm -hmm. on that. Take us to to your experience at uh, THR. Uh, THR again was one of these uh, you know great legacy stations, family owned. Um, the Wolf family owns that, and they also own a, a station in Columbus, Ohio. Um, you know, very solid, very you know. Journalism is the basis of, of what they do. Not right. every station does right. that. And so it was a great opportunity to be in the main anchor, um, 6 and uh, 10 slash 11 o'clock. Yeah. That's when we were going back and forth. Right. Half the time we were yeah. on, you know, 10 o'clock, half mm -hmm. time 11. 
uh, but it was just a, a really good opportunity. But, um, you know, I always kind of had a sports bug in the back of my head. Right. And um, I had done a little bit of sports reporting when I was, um, even when I was in uh, South Bend, I did a little sports reporting. I did a little uh, when I was in uh, at Channel Nine, and of course in Indianapolis, so much of the day-to-day -day news it revolves around, around sports. Sports, yeah. That was when uh, we were going to host the Pan Am Games in '87. 80, yes. That. So, so much of what we did on a daily basis was had something to do with sports. Our our station was like the host local. Right. station so we had uh, all kinds of specials on the Pan Am game so I still did a little bit of sports and then um, one of our sports anchors got a job in uh, New York at Sports Channel America and toward the end of my contract he said hey they're looking for uh, a female anchor why don't you just send in a tape well, you, know, I, you know why not and uh, so I got a job, uh, that was my first full-time sports job, was Sports Channel America um, on Long Island. So I got to do oh, wow. that for about a year. You didn't develop a Long Island accent? Uh, no, yeah. Only when I want to. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's Long Island. you got to right. say it through your nose. Yeah, it's not like you're going to kill somebody. Yes. They have that accent there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so in sports, which obviously Betsy brings me to ESPN. Mm -hmm. I'm turning on the tube one night. Betsy Ross is on ESPN. You I know? can't keep a job, yeah, can I? <laughs> Hey, we know how it goes. So, and, and I was surprised to learn that you were commuting back and forth. Mm -hmm. Tell us about ESPN. Well, I, I mean, if you're a sports nut. Yeah, you're watching uh, Yeah. I mean, yeah. what a great place to be. Um, I, I did uh, Sports Channel America for a year, and then I had an opportunity to come back home to Channel 5 yeah. in Cincinnati. Yeah. And when I was there, I um, uh, covered a lot of the Olympics, the 96 Olympics mm -hmm. in Atlanta. We had probably two dozen area um, athletes who were going to go to the Atlanta Olympics. So again, our news coverage had a lot to do with sports, and mm -hmm. I covered that. I covered that for uh, NBC News Channel and for NBC uh, during the Olympics. And then uh, it was when, at the same time, ESPN was getting ready to launch ESPN News. Right, which I believe was in 97. Seven. Yes, yes. And they wanted somebody who knew sports but could anchor a half hour, hour at a time. Right like you can when you're doing news. Yeah. So it was a great opportunity for me to be able to move into ESPN News. But I, I, I commuted back and forth on my days off, um, mainly because, you know, this, this was still home. Mm -hmm. right, sure. uh, my mother was uh, still uh, living south of town. I wanted to come back, you know, keep an eye on her. Right. Uh, I teach, I taught then, still teach at uh, Xavier University. So ESPN uh -huh. was really good about making sure that I had either Wednesday, Thursday, or Thursday, Friday off so I could teach, teach. my Thursday wow. night class. Uh -huh. So, uh, so yeah, so I was racking up the frequent flyers. Yeah, I would say so. While. You yeah. probably should still be flying for free. <laughs> so, so ESPN, you, and, and then and now you're back at Fox, so it's kind of like, like uh, full circle, mm -hmm. and you own, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Game, game Day Communications. Game Day Communications. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Well, it was um, a little bit of a cliche, but um, after 9-11, I was on the air uh, mm -hmm. uh, the day of 9-11, and I stayed on the air for almost on eight ESPN? hours. Yes. Wow. Because it was one of these things that you couldn't ignore it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, you know, later on in the day, there were sports related updates you know the nfl is canceled this week major league baseball is canceled right. for tonight so um so yeah so i was on the air from from nine in the morning until about four in the afternoon uh, yeah. i was on the air when the when the towers came down wow um yeah. which you know was pretty sobering but yeah. after 9 11 i think everybody mm -hmm. kind of um reevaluated their lives mm -hmm. and yeah, we all did and and i did and i said you know i love what i'm doing i just signed my second contract at ESPN and I thought you know do I want to do this for right. much longer you know fly you know flying was never fun beforehand but it was right. a real pain yeah, I would bet I would bet and I said do I want to keep doing this and you know and the answer frankly was no I wanted to be home take care of my mom uh, you know just be back home right. and so a friend of mine and I had talked about doing a sports PR company for quite some time and we said, you know what, let's do this. So uh, in uh, April of um, 2002, we started Game Day Communications, still going strong 12 years later.
Betsy, I cannot believe I'm getting the signal. We've been almost here 30 minutes. It's, <laughs> we can do an on-the-spot part two with Betsy Ross. I'd love to have you come back sometime because I'm love sure there's to. much more to say. Uh, but the more of the story is that you've never lost touch of Connorsville. No, I mean, this is a special place. People here have been so good, you know, just following me in my career right. and, and supporting me. And, and that's been so gratifying to know that, that you know, your hometown fans, friends, relatives, mm -hmm. they follow you throughout yeah. your career. And, uh, you know, Connersville has meant and still means a lot to me. Betsy Ross, thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks we'll for having me. We'll be back next time for another edition of On the Spot.